Good morning. Welcome back. You're still watching Debrek on this 22nd day of November 2022. My name is Sam Gitugo. I want to introduce the panelists that we have in studio. We have uh, Pauline Lenguris, Member of Parliament for Samburu County. Good morning. And it's good to see you. We have Yusuf Hassan, the Member of Parliament for Kamukunje Constituency. Good morning. Good morning. And we have John Kagushi, Member of Parliament for Mukurueni Constituency. Good morning. Good morning. Great, and it's good to have all of you here. I'm just feeling that I, like I should ask you, why are your specs? <laughs> 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 Yusuf Hassan is giving you his. <laughs> why is uh, helping me with his? No, but these ones will affect my eyes. Uh, you can see these ones are quite <laughs> thick. <laughs> okay, all right. It's good to see you all here. And uh, we're here to have a conversation about the latest in uh, public discourse. For instance, if you look at the two dailies, on the front page of the standard, it is the Maze Rebellion, MPs from the the rifts are up in arms of a government intention to import maize, saying move will hurt their constituents who are harvesting their crop at the moment. Clergy demands apology from trade seers over GMO remarks. And of course, there are different voices there that have been quoted. We'll be listening to some of them, including Moses Kuria saying that the government of Kenya will not buy maize directly or indirectly, other than uh, for strategic reserve. The Gazette notice we will release today will open up the market to millers and anyone to import maize duty-free for six months. And I told you earlier, this is not the first time you're seeing such a window being opened, but sometimes it has turned to uh, being abused and becoming subject of many conversations and many investigations by Parliament. We'll be speaking to the members of Parliament here to tell us what they think about it. On the front page of the Daily Nation, Ruto plots to take full control of Parliament, uh, talking about a target of an absolute majority, majority rather, which would be 233, 234, and having one over 10 of the 12 independent lawmakers, um, Kenya Kwanzaa strategists see the possibility of bringing the 40, bridging the 44 member gap to a two thirds majority that would guarantee President William Ruto's coalition an easy time in passing key legislation to support his agenda, as well as powers to approve or reject changes to the constitution. This is coming at a time that uh, there has been some discomfort, as expressed by some of the members of parliament from the Jubilee Party side. We saw Sabine Shege uh, sometime, was it last week or the week before? I think it was last week, uh, speaking about the ELA elections and saying that uh, uh, she feels the party has not been speaking in one voice, but also some of the members, including Sarah Correre, saying that uh, they were being mistreated by ODM and uh, to the tune that uh, they were thinking about the future of the party. So we'll be talking about that later on. But first, let's talk about the conversation on maize and listen to the uh, bishops who spoke about this uh, yesterday, um, one bishop from the Catholic Church and the other from ACK. Watch. About GMOs, it's a serious matter that deserves discussion, deep, sober engagement. We understand we may need for a momentary relief to go towards embracing the feeding of our people with food that may be, in fact, GMO. But that's not the solution. We need to address the deep-seated issues. We cannot uh, just give uh, uh, something like that without uh, proper scientific research. The question which arise, who did the scientific research about GMO? Where was it done? Uh, where was it public participation? Uh, what is it? Of course, they spoke at length on uh, several matters, several concerns, including um, Bishop Mohere saying that uh, he's not comfortable with the sentiments of uh, the trade CS Moses Courier, who was saying that uh, there are many things that can kill you in Kenya. Uh, it's okay to add GMOs to that list. But let's begin by looking at the situation. And I'll begin with you, Pauline, um, because uh, Samburu County has been listed as one of those areas that are facing uh, serious effects of the drought situation in the country. Uh, would you know how the situation is at the moment? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I am actually from the, uh, the area yesterday, and uh, the situation is so there. We have faced a drought that we have never faced for the last 40 years. So we have missed rain for the last three years. So people are suffering with hunger. We have lost a lot of livestock. Uh, even some of our, most of our schools are threatened to be closed because children cannot get food from the school because since parents cannot pay, the teachers cannot have food for the children in school. Mm -hmm. So we are actually facing a very severe drought and uh, we have called on the government to supply the food relief to the people 
I don't know whether, I think it's now the time Kenyans, we are really facing the right um, uh, effects of the climate change because mm -hmm. we have never gone for three years consecutive without rain. So we are seriously in their need of food. Mm -hmm. The whole county is affected. We have lost a lot of livestock and people have lost their livelihood. So the situation in Samburu is seriously very um, uh, serious, actually. <coughs> and of course, we've seen some <coughs> efforts in relief food distribution, but also yesterday the president appointed um, some steering committee that is led by the private sector reporting to the deputy president. When you, when you look at the relief efforts that have been coming to your region, how successful are they and how, what support are they offering? Actually, the, the support we have received so far is a temporary kind of uh, relief. So we got a bit of food from, from the government, uh, but actually it's very minimal, very small. There was a time we had a consultative meeting with the, all the stakeholders, all the NGOs working in Samburu, and we had to tell them to stop all, any development program so that we focus on, on the issues of supplying people with food because that is the urgent need currently. Uh, so we have re received a, a little a bit of support from the government, but we still need. Mm. Uh, there was even a time we lost our, an old man because of, of lack of food. And uh, really, so many people are suffering. Almost 85% of the people need food <coughs> right now. So we still need a lot of support from the government. <coughs> and uh, anyone who is a well-wisher who has anything to offer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Moshma Yusuf, I mean, because this is, like she says, it's the worst in 40 years. But we've been here before. And when you look at the efforts, do you see anything that is different that is likely to help us survive this season, but also in the future, are we laying the proper foundation? Not at all. It is uh, uh, an absolute, uh, utter tragedy that uh, 60, nearly 60 years after our independence, uh, we're not able to deal with the basic uh, necessities, the basic needs of our citizens. And that in 2022, mm -hmm. uh, we're having people on the verge of starvation in our country. This is a total failure of leadership and policy over a number of decades in our country. And therefore, even now, as I look at how we are addressing it, it is more like firefighting. You wait for the fire to erupt and you rush in with the fire brigade um, to dish out some assistance. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to go beyond that. We also need to move away from knee-jerk uh, uh, solutions, like now this rush to say, because we have uh, starvation, we have drought. We must do another extreme thing and therefore introduce GMO into our um, uh, food system, in, into our food chain system. Uh, and I think uh, the Catholic Church is on spot. They have spoken very well uh, in a wise and uh, measured way and, and a, in, in a very Im impactful way. And I fully agree with them. Uh, and I think the utterances of the CS uh, he has shown to be brainless, reckless, and irresponsible. And I think he needs a minder now because some of those utterances have an impact on our economy and, and, and the lives of our country. And I think it is important that if we are going to make a shift uh, in policy, a major shift like this one, um, you know, it is uh, rational to um, have a discussion, to open up the discussion for the millions of the people that it's going to affect. We are an agricultural country. Mm -hmm. Agriculture is the backbone of our economy. We're simply not going to be reckless and start uh, uh, using a hammer uh, to start smashing uh, the whole agricultural sector without much thought. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, uh, it looks like uh, uh, this is selling the people of Kenya out and um, giving um, the opportunity for some few cartels to benefit at the expense of the whole country. So mm -hmm. I think it is right that we should, this matter should be debated, a public discussion, a, a rational uh, discussion, and only then should we decide. And I think to a certain extent, one, there's nothing wrong with, uh, uh, with, with, with talking about GMO, but we should do it in the right context and agree as a nation that is uh, what we want to do with the research with more discussions, I'm sure th this country can reach uh, uh, decisions uh, that would help uh, our farmers. Okay. But on the issue of uh, importing maize, that is going to have two uh, 
negative impact. Mm -hmm. One is it immediately it is going to depress the price of maize, which would affect our local farmers, which we should not do. Mm -hmm. The second one is the long-term, devastating, irreversible consequences of, of, of GMO seeds in our country. Uh, so those are two negative factors. Okay. Uh, and at the end of the, the, that tunnel, I don't see the benefit of GMO anyway, because we have... Uh, we, we can also compete in the world by producing organic foods, uh, which would be marketable. Mm -hmm. Many countries will not be able to buy our products if we go that. So, so, so you don't find the drought situation in the country making a case for GMO if they are said to be drought resistant? No, actually, for, for the immediate need, if we need maize, why should we not buy non-GMO maize, which is all over the place? Mm -hmm. You know, our neighbors have it. We're in East Africa. Uh, they're growing normal maize. What is this mad rush to want to go to uh, GMO uh, maize? Is it self-interest? Is it supporting the uh, minority interests of people who would benefit from this particular contract? What is it? Because it doesn't just make sense that uh, we suddenly import GMO into a, into a country which is non-GMO so far. This, okay. this requires a bit of time. All right, we'll get back to that. But there's something you said that uh, the CS requires a minder. What do you mean? Absolutely, yeah. because his brain is disconnected from his mouth. He <coughs> speaks whatever he wants, regardless of the consequences. And he is a cabinet secretary in the government of Kenya. He's not an activist. He's not a street fighter or a street brawler. He's a cabinet secretary, for heaven's sake, in the government of Kenya. And um, what he says carries weight. So he should respect the office that he, he holds, and he should respect the citizen of Kenya. He said the same thing about Mitumba, uh, carelessly, <coughs> with, uh, with some consequences uh, to the Mitumba farmers, uh, the traders. He is now talking about GMO as if it is an ordinary thing, uh, and about death and suffering, something that has been highlighted by our religious leaders, which I fully agree with. Okay. Uh, he should be careful. And if he's not going to be careful, and the, uh, his uh, appointing authority is, uh, is not uh, uh, asking him to moderate, then he should, uh, like uh, Boris Johnson, who, who was a similar character, had a minder to keep, away, to keep him away from the media and to, uh, to say things that might have consequences. Well, um, unfortunately, the CS is not in the studio to defend himself or yeah. to explain himself. Uh, so I have to say that uh, those are specifically the views of a member of parliament for Kamukunji, Yusuf Hassan. Um, but he's a public figure. Uh, right. I'm and just we saying, have I mean, the right to criticize There's something you said speak. about his brain and his mouth. I don't think that's a, that's a fair comment. It's, it's just an, exa an explanation of how he thinks and uh, the controversies he has created <coughs> so far in the country. Okay. Um, Honobo Kagushia. Mm. Now... Look, the situation is what it is. Um, is, it, is it getting better in your county, first of all, before you can get to the national approach? Yeah, it's raining now, so we expect that things will be much better. We have had uh, challenges with the, uh, with the food for, for human consumption, as well as uh, uh, with animal feeds. Uh, but now it, it's, uh, they, there's an improvement because of the rain. And of course, uh, Nyeri being an arable area, once you receive some amount of rainfall continuously, then you start seeing quite a bit of improvement. The whole place starts becoming green, and that way people are able to uh, to get food once again. Uh, and so uh, there's hope, uh, quite a lot of hope. And uh, I'm, I'm sure the situation, especially where, need, uh, where help is needed, will not last long. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe that help with time may be then uh, of course redirected to areas which are much more affected where they are not receiving rainfall still mm -hmm. yeah, but for now i know i know in the next two three weeks we'll have a lot of uh, food available for people in terms of uh, greens and of course any other food that will be consumed by our public especially in Nyeri county so we pray that the rain continues and and that will help to improve the situation in a, in, in a great way uh Maybe just to touch on this issue of uh, GMOs. Uh, first of all, what, what, what are um, farmers in Nyeri saying about th th that lifting of the ban? Are they warming up to planting GM products? Well, I, I, I do not think uh, 
in Nyeri, the issue of the GMO foods is as political as it seems uh, countrywide or in other parts of the country, because again, it's also not in the whole country. Uh, the, the issue of GMO or genetically modified food has generally been of a political, it has attracted more politics and uh, political uh, intonations much more than uh, uh, the, the scientific understanding of the, of the concept. And uh, if you want to understand it well, just look at the politicians. They normally make their arguments based on which side of politics they are seated. Yeah. yeah? If you look at, for example, now uh, we, we have uh, the former prime minister on one side now who, who, who is condemning and criticizing the issue of the GMO foods. And uh, he, he wants to come out as a voice of the people uh, in terms of uh, people who cultivate maize. And, and now he's pitted against uh, the president who uh, seems to, to maintain a stand that both of them shared when one was a prime minister and the other one was a minister for agriculture. Mm -hmm. yeah, because at some point they actually shared a, a platform where the former prime minister, Raila Odinga, and uh, uh, William Samoy Ruto, who was then the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the agriculture cabinet secretary. And, and both of them seemed to believe and to think that uh, GMO foods could improve the food situation and food security in the country. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, but again, uh, now looking at a few years later, where now one is the president, the other one is uh, the opposition leader, you find them making different arguments. And, and really, th that's for political sake. The, the others who are arguing it from a moral perspective, and you'd understand, you have the church who are actually raising this issue from a moral uh, background. Um, you know, you know the, the challenge with the GMO food is that uh, uh, where the seeds or these foods are seen to have uh, uh, their genetic material or the DNA in a way modified makes them to look in a way unnatural. Uh, and, and, and that is where now you find there is a difference between the moralists uh, and, and uh, the, the scientists. And uh, some of, sometimes you can also look at the naturalists as well. So sometimes you'll find there would be a different approach to, to this. Mm -hmm. Now, the same effect that we'll be getting, and, and maybe perhaps this is what uh, Moses Kuria was trying to explain in words that uh, were seen to be rude or not to be uh, acceptable to the public, uh, th that in, in this country we still, or we have a lot of other uh, chemicals, that are used in food production mm -hmm. that are heavily uh, poisonous and affect the human beings or the human health in, in Kenya and across the African continent and indeed across the world. But some of these uh, chemicals are much more in use in Africa. Uh, look at uh, pesticides, some of the pesticides that we are using, for example. They, they have been banned in other European countries for, for a long time. But in Kenya, we still use those uh, pesticides. But uh, of course, because they are not uh, genetically modified mm -hmm. uh, or seem to be unnatural, so you, f you don't find the moralists and maybe the church leaders uh, having a problem with them. But if we, we seriously want to address uh, the issue or the things that affect our health, we need to largely look at all these chemicals uh, that uh, we are using in the food production chain. We have fertilizers, for example. Some of these fertilizers, not just some of these fertilizers, fertilizers are, are, are not natural, so to say. Mm -hmm. If we seriously want to stick to what is natural and to what is uh, original and to what, is, what we would refer as kienyeji, then we would probably want to go much more to organic farming where we are using manure. Mm -hmm. But you see, over the years, we have realized that we may not have sufficient manure to be able to apply in our land to, uh, to produce sufficient food. So with time, we have uh, improved from manure to fertilizers. Now you have seen uh, lately, we have even been using much more foliar, which you spray to even the, the leaves yeah, uh, to absorb directly now into the plant to make it uh, produce more and faster. Mm -hmm. And of course, this means that uh, this affects uh, or, or, you know, kind of these chemicals do affect what we are consuming as humans. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, sometimes uh, some of us who like to have healthy living, sometimes we want to consume uh, raw food, like uh, fruits and greens, like carrots. You want to make carrot juice. You want to uh, uh, make uh, green juices, fresh juices. But sometimes some of those uh, uh, foodstuffs that you are using to make that green juice and they are not even hitting them, 
are so much sprayed with chemicals, pesticides and other uh, chemicals that we are using and fertilizers, that you actually now consume all this poison raw. Yet you are looking for health. You want mm -hmm. to be more healthy. Okay. So w what we find ourselves is, is in a situation where we have uh, challenges with what, whatever the science has brought to the table for improvement in terms of production. Okay. And so the, the challenge wouldn't uh, be uh, only genetically modified foods. Now, uh, no, no, j just before you carry on, because you'll get back to that, um, you said that uh, Ray Lodinga served as prime minister while William Ruto was the agriculture minister. Yeah. That is not correct. Um, William Ruto was dropped from the Minister of Agriculture in April 2010, 21st of April 2010, and the sentiments by Ray Lodinga were made in August. At that time, I believe. I mean, we were made in 2011. At that time, I believe William Ruto was the cabinet secretary or cabinet minister in charge of higher education because he was uh, dropped from cabinet in August 2011. Just wanted to. Well, well, yeah, that. That, that's okay. But, but I think really that, that has only to do with the dates uh, when he was a. Uh, no, what, what I'm explaining is because you're saying that. Uh, William Ruto as cabinet minister for agriculture was in the same was on the same side. No, with well, I think, I think no, I think the point is the point is here, Sam, that the issue of the GMO food is uh, taken much more politically, and it is on record that Raila Odinga did support GMO foods mm -hmm. as much as uh, uh, William Samoy Ruto did support GMO foods at that time when they were both in government. We, we don't know that because w no, we can't Raila say Odinga we is on tape. But a cabinet decision that was made later on by the president, by the government of Mike Kibaki was to ban um, GMO foods. We don't know in that. Whether you, we know, you know, Sam, uh, maybe I can just, uh, you know, just joke your memory. No, no, no. Uh, let's just move on. I'm just saying that it's, it's not on record that William Ruto supported GMO or didn't in 2011 or 2010. We don't know that. No, I know that. I know that. You see, it's on record. I, you know, have, when, when, how when, I was, when I was asked, no, of course, when I was asked to come to the show, I did also go back into history. So how do and, you know that? and even just looking at even the Daily Nation today, even looking at Daily Nation today, it has recorded that. Maybe I would uh, just get a clip here or just uh, I could read for you some of the paragraphs in the Daily Nation here. And, and also uh, what we have uh, <coughs> on record, yeah? We have uh, situations where I'll get it just now, and I'll, I'll read for you. No, I'll read okay. also but for the some, viewers. But, but, but what the, uh, what there has been the is what has, uh, there has been is that the issue of GMO food has been politically instigated. I mean, it is it is taken uh, you know politically, uh, largely, uh, depending on which side of politics you you are. Mm -hmm. then you either support or you yeah. don't support. And, and, and it's on record that Raila Odinga did support GMOs. And I, although I don't think that really is a big issue. Okay. Because, because uh, the, the issue here, mm -hmm. I, I don't think we need to dwell so much on the issue of the politics about it. Okay. Because if you look I'll at... Back to you and Honorable yeah. Isufasan. Let me hear from um, Pauline here. Your opinion about uh, GM products being brought into the country because they would be a bit more drought resistant and also resistant to pests. Um, do you buy the idea? How helpful would it be for Samburu County? for instance? Um, Sam, I think um, the, we have a problem of food shortage in the country. Mm -hmm. And I think there, there is no time that Kenya produced enough food that was uh, enough for all the citizens. So every time we keep on importing food from, from other countries like Uganda, people go to Tanzania. So there is no, the, the supply does not match with the, with the demand of the mm -hmm. people. <clears throat> so for me, the introduction of GMO or uh, really needs to be handled with a lot, of, a lot of care and caution. Because if you look at, I was reading an article yesterday and I realized that Kenya, <coughs> Kenya was the, the eighth country in Africa that signed to GMO mm -hmm. and 71 country in the, in the whole world. So if you look at countries like USA, uh, Brazil, Argentina, Canada, those are the countries that have signed to introduction of uh, GMO in their countries. And if there was a danger in, in, in introduction of GMO, I'm sure those big countries could not have, uh, have agreed on introduction of, of this product into their country. But since Kenya, we are facing a lot of challenges, I think we need to do a lot of research mm -hmm. before to ensure that this food that we are introducing, the, the, the GMOs that we are introducing to the country, is safe for the people. Uh, if you look at the other advantages of, of, of of introduction of GMOs. We are fed, facing right now a lot of food insecurity in the country. So if we could get food security <clears throat> and a bit of pesticide control, because uh, as Mwishmua said, the farmers are using a lot of chemicals and maybe even the chemicals have not been researched well. So we are already exposed in any way. 
because okay. we are already using the chemical. So what I would advise uh, the, the, the country and what, myself being one of the of the members from the, the the ruling coalition, I think we need to do a lot of a bit of research. And uh, if you look at what is, has happened for so many years, there was no a, a research that has been done. That has, uh, that has given um, an evidence that there are diseases that have been caused by introduction of GMOs. So these are just connotations. People are making uh, uh, their own conclusions that it is associated with the cancer. But if you look at the cause of cancer... Would, would they resolve the challenge of uh, Samburu County? Yes, we will get enough food because uh, farmers will be able to, to introduce a lot of... Uh, to, to plant and uh, give a lot, give, get a lot of yield. And then the, 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 there will be there will be a lot of food supply, and this will will. What live. is the main challenge uh, for agriculture in Samburu County? Mm, I think the rains, because uh, the, the climatic conditions do not allow most of the parts to, to to engage in agriculture. So we mostly do livestock production. So, so how would GM seeds? Yeah, if that? if we are telling the country we get we get water, and then maybe if we can get boreholes, we can get uh, big dams. Mm -hmm. Then we can do some irrigation, and we can also produce food for okay. ourselves. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Yusuf Hassan, you wanted to say something. Yes, I think uh, this <coughs> issue is, is big. It is so big and so important that we cannot leave this uh, to. Uh, to some few individuals or politicians. Mm -hmm. This matter is beyond uh, President uh, Ruto uh, and former Prime Minister Raila Odinga. It's a matter that would have serious consequences for the 50 million Kenyans. It's not something that you can just leave it and say it is a political debate between two protagonists, mm -hmm. you know, two, two people who are opposing each other. It is much more than that. Uh, and let's look at the fact that uh, there is really absolutely no problem about uh, discussing or introducing GMO mm -hmm. uh, if you have the scientific facts, if you have done your scientific research, and if you have debated and agreed that that is the, the path to ta take, mm -hmm. then you choose the right options to do it. But let's look at um, what the problem with GMO, apart from the controversies of uh, cancer and diseases. The biggest problem GMO has is that um, the seedlings that you would be buying are produced by three transnational companies. Uh, in Kenya, uh, we are not likely to be the producers of those seeds. We would be buyers, which means if we introduce GMO, for example, let's say maize, mm -hmm. that uh, seedings, those seedings would uh, uh, crossbreed uh, and interfere with the genetic um, um, uh, factors of our own uh, local food production, our sorghum, our millet, our maize, all these traditional food uh, chains and food systems would be destroyed. And you would be left uh, with buying uh, seeds from these monopolies because we don't have, um, we, we don't have the, um, the capacity to produce them. When my sister says the U.S. has introduced it, U.S., the United States owns the technology and the scientific capacity to be able to use that science for its own benefit. Uh, Brazil and Canada are big countries that have the cap capabilities to use that technology. Mm -hmm. We don't. We don't have the science and technology. For example, we India introduced learn. GMO. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we learn from the from No, no, but we don't. You would be buying seeds at, uh, uh, at quite an expense. You would, you would, first of all, impoverish millions of our peasants. The maize farmers now that are crying would be out of business. Mm -hmm. uh, because big companies would come in, and that is the reality. <coughs> India is one country that has done that, mm -hmm. and millions of Indian peasants were, uh, were, were, were impoverished uh, and, and thrown out of the, um, uh, the agriculture sector in, um, in India. We are an agricultural country. 33%, it, it contributes to 33% of our GDP. About uh, 40 to 50 million uh, percent of our population is dependent on that. So it is important instead of rushing into this decision, some few people deciding in a boardroom uh, and making a decision for all of us, it is important that it should be open up to t public debate, our scientific institutions, our leaders, everybody to discuss it. Right. And if we think it is the right thing for us to do, then we move forward to benefit uh, from, um, uh, from whatever we can benefit from GMO. Okay. Okay. But at the moment, uh -huh. The decision has been made in a rush. Uh, it appears as if some people have self-interest. Uh, the importation of G GMO maize is uh, driven by the interests of cartels and a small minority. 
it is going to destroy our agriculture and our maize uh, farmers would be devastated and we would be thrown into poverty uh, uh, and, and underdevelopment. Okay, all right. I want us to take a short break, but I don't understand how a rush it would be at a time that the ban was um, imposed in 2012. Mm -hmm. yeah. In 2013, the cabinet of Uhuru Kenyatta yeah. Yeah. tried to review it. There was a report, I think, <coughs> either 2013 or 2014 from uh, a task force. Then the decision to lift uh, came in 2022, uh, I think. Yes, with a new government that has just yeah. come into office. With, the same, with no discussion. Some, with the same cabinet. Some, I think, no discussions. Uh, this is not the time we are hearing. No discussions. No discussions. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Uh, Why after, are they afraid of after the public? The why is there the, no public participation? Let's take a break. Mm. We'll come back and you'll tell me what is the role of parliament <laughs> in such a decision. Stay tuned.